Hello and welcome to Chapter 2 of your Norton Writing Guide. Distance is a great promoter of admiration. Let's think about that for a moment in terms of writing. What can distance do to help us with our writing? In short, taking some time apart from the act of writing and the act of thinking about writing can provide some great clues. So this video covers Chapter 2 of Reading in Academic Context. So we're going to start with taking stock of your reading. And these are some journal questions that I want you to think about and I want you to thoughtfully answer. What do you read for pleasure? How do you approach reading assignments? Do you make sure to understand the purpose of what you're reading? How do you motivate yourself to read something you have no interest in? Does your mind wander? Do you highlight or annotate books or stories that you're reading or articles? Take a moment and pause the video here and think about these questions as you write them down in your journal. So reading strategically. Reading strategically is very much about thinking about what you want to learn before you read, while you're reading, and after you're reading. It starts with previewing the text and previewing the text is when you actually open the chapter and you kind of look through it. You're not reading at this point, but you're looking at what the bolded titles are. Are there things that are highlighted in different colors? Are there little boxes that have little tidbit information in there? Those are called sidebars. Kind of get a feel for it. Sometimes there'll be pictures, and those pictures can be photographs, drawings, charts, any kind of visual media that might help you understand what you're about to read. A lot of time when people read, they just start reading and they don't think about the other information on the page that goes into help with understanding. So I encourage you to look at your text differently and adjust the reads, the speed that you read. A lot of people are good at skimming, but skimming is not allowing you to think through something as you read it. You're just getting bits of information quickly. And that's really not the point of reading, and especially not the point of reading to help you learn how to do something. So organizational clues. I talked about that just a second ago. Organizational clues has to do with the, the titles, um, the way the graphics are laid out on the paper, the way the text is laid out on the paper. All of that is put together in the book or on the ebook to help you facilitate the learning. So here's a couple of questions that you would be asking yourself as you read something. And we'll get into more of that later this uh, in this module when we do more reading. So what are your initial reactions to the reading? Do you, Initially, do you agree or disagree with the author? Uh, do you find that article easy to read or difficult to read or uh, boring, interesting? And what accounts for your reaction? Are you maybe reading this last minute before class so that you can discuss it? Or really late at night when you'd really rather be sleeping? Or really early in the morning when you'd rather be sleeping? <laughs> So when you deal with difficult texts, and there's going to be a lot of difficult texts in college, you need to look and find something about it that's familiar. Looking for landmarks, things that you recognize, things that you can connect to other readings. You need to monitor your understanding. Uh, many times we'll read something, and if we stop for a second, we'll think, I didn't, don't even know it was in that last paragraph. Or in my case, sometimes it's a whole page I can somehow read and not retain. So you have to be persistent. You've got to go back and reread information, even if you've already read it, to make sure that you get it. Annotating. Annotating is a skill that is, many students don't do. And part of this comes from um, not being able to write in class copies of things or uh, ebooks that do not allow for annotating. But annotating is really important. It allows you to take notes as you're reading. So when you go back to look at it, you don't have to reread the whole thing. You just look at your notes, and that helps you understand better. And over time, annotating gets easier and easier. One part of annotating that students may or may not always get is that they run into words they can't figure out. And a lot of times we can use context clues to figure out what, um, what a word means or what a, a concept is. But Sometimes we just need to go over to that dictionary or open the dictionary app and look up the definition, and it makes it a much deeper understanding. Here's an example here of an annotated passage. Okay, so we've got um, a key on the on the right hand side that shows strong or needs to improve um, in different colors, and then also notes about what the phrases mean to them. 
So this is something that really does help people uh, go back and look at their information and say, oh, okay, I remember reading that. That is a good point. I might need to write about that. Or, you know, this could help me on an essay test. Please feel free to let me know if you have any questions. Other than that, I'll see you next week. Bye.